First match of top eight. It's going to be Danny on the Kai versus Meat on the May. Now, Danny actually got like second place last week, I want to say. And uh, they played really, really well. I'm excited to see if they can continue having great performances. And Meat is actually a previous champion of the back row brawl. And they actually recently played in the Invitational. Not in the newest one, but in the previous one they played in it. And they did well. Uh, cry, that was your, your, your cue to talk. Oh, oh that, was, that, was my, that was my cue. Yeah. Uh, very, early on, very, very early on into the round, just seeing that Dainey, he's establishing screen dominance. He's getting me to block. He's getting me to block. Even in even in these neutral situations where May should theoretically have the advantage over Kai, Dainey is still forcing me to block, even though, you know, they're not doing anything. And that is the sign of a strong player. And I do want to see how this set goes, because this is obviously, you know, my first NA set that I'm casting and meet going, going in with the early pressure this round yeah and it is going to be meet going for the up dolphin into some pressure gets there with the with the lows and it is going to be an OTG into continuous pressure 5k into the 6k into the fast dolphin fast RC afterwards another OT set OTG set up into the beach ball and what an incredible round it shouldn't be over just yet but it is going to be very difficult for Danny to come back oh great back dash on that 6h yeah, backdash and a stun dipper is quite the maneuver. And that might give Danny a chance to get back into the game. Although Meat does have meter right about now. They're going to use the PRC to keep himself safe. From the whiff, it's going to be two S and a fast off and not going to be enough to kill. Jumps in and the cross up 2P going to be up enough to close out the round. Dual three, three. Let's oh, big counts there. Yeah, yeah you're going to first first come out. Yeah, you do not want to hold that damage. Uh, May does a ridiculous amount from that. It's going to be meaty Fujiwaka into the close slash. Staggers coming out here from Danny. Backs up, gives up some space, tries to recontest, and that will be the DP. Oh, oh Kai Classic, run up throw. What's the mix here? Oh, 5k uh, dash cancel into throw. Oh, charge 5D. Yeah, I'm not falling the for that. The nerve of Danny. Yeah, going for charge 5Ds, I feel like you really have to condition your opponent to respect your initial pressure structure before getting away with something like that, at least against good players. Yeah, over that, if you'd be stealthy and just uh, 5D as your opponent falls. What a combo from me, gonna secure that first game there. It's gonna be one up against Danny on the Kai. If, if every single set is as electric and there's no pun intended for Kai there, as, as what we just saw, then, you know, we're in for a one hell of a top eight. Yeah, uh, I mean, these two players are just really good. They, I see them in tournaments often, and we even see them in this tournament, and they do really well. So uh, I expected this kind of caliber of set, and we are definitely getting that so far. Round start's going to be really big, particularly for May, though, because of the reward she gets, and oh. just I say it's going to be a big 2H counter hit into full screen corner carry. And Who's not the first? A bit weird. Like second, seventy percent there, really. Yeah, I definitely would have bursted. I feel like you kind of gave up this whole round, and then they commit the burst afterwards. Definitely seems like a mistake. And now Meat's going to be sitting here with two bars. Will Danny find a way? Five K Meaty's coming out. Oh, no, potential dragon still could be coming here. Oh please no! It's just a guaranteed round loss. Very nice block, and then actually gets a counter hit. Not gonna die though, it's gonna be a 5D wire seat, saving the day. And stunned for catching up, Dolphin! And to the burst bait! <laughs> that was a ridiculous comeback. Lee tries to jump in, but Danny just playing super patiently and reactively. Gonna once yeah, again Danny... get a nasty 6 p.m. Danny's been like on point with his anti airs recently. It's, it's been like 10 for, no 10 for nothing here. Every single anti air that I've, that I've seen Danny commit to has hit. Yeah, and Mid's just like not that. an easy character to anti air. <laughs> but it's going to happen again. Red RC and the Fuji arc will be enough to kill. Danny going to respond to the game of their own. Yeah, that's going to be one, that's gonna be one, one between Meat on the Mate and Danny on the Kai. Both very strong players, as we saw between those last two games. I do, I do want to see what goes on in game three here because it, it it's just. From what I'm seeing right now, every single round is back and forth. It's either in Meat's favor or in Danny's favor. Because as we saw in the first round of that game, when uh, Danny committed to the burst far too late, but still took the round and the burst from Meat. This could be the start of something great for the entire top eight. Anyway, going to game four here. Game three, sorry. It is going to be a JS, but the lack of conversion is going to give Meat a punish. 
Bow Slash going to get DP'd. Bow Slash coming out here from Danny as well. The preemptive six big going to get the counter hit. Both players playing very patiently. Danny allowing me to get out of the corner. Are they re going to regret it? 2H gets a counter hit. DP coming out. Both players have one bar to work with. And it is once again going to be the stun dipper into once again a burst bay. And Danny should be taking this round. Yeah, so the second time that Danny's burst back meet in the first round of a game. This could be, this could become a recurring theme between this and this uh, top eight here. Ooh, good mash out of pressure there from me, but it doesn't really matter though because his car is pressured. It's new, but Danny's neutral. They go hand in hand. Look at that six p on the dolphin. That is huge. Very well played from Danny there. Continues the pressure as well. Good trades as well. Very close to death here. You might as well be dead if you're if you're me in this situation. Well, I wouldn't say that. There's always a chance oh. to come back, especially when you're playing there a character a chance, like Matt, yeah. who will just explode you. But the fast RC into the 5D will close out the round. And Danny going to take a 2-1 lead in the set. And something I, I think we saw there was uh, Maze of Bari buttons just really aren't great, particularly, particularly when it comes to their 5P and 2Ps. Because they don't get great reward afterwards, right? Like, what are they gatlinging their, their P buttons into? Like, it's hard to say. I don't think it combos into their 6k, no? 6k, no, it doesn't. Uh, oh, the slide, maybe? Out, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it combos, but it'd be, it'd be a good link, I, I suppose. No, because if, uh, if it's not comboing, then they block down your punishable. Yeah, but 3k is just like a bag of bucket stun dipper, so no one's going to block that anywhere. Kind of true. Pujarak's right over the opponent's actually going to be a cross-up, and Danny has a bar. Not going to extend pressure, just wants to play neutral, and that 6p once again is going to be a killer here. Pujarak, take him out of the sky. 5k into the Ride the Lightning. Well, dead here, but that is positive bonus for Danny's side, and the hard knockdown's going to be huge. No meat on meat side to speak of, but the burst is there. What a throw, that's going to secure the round. That's, gonna be, that's not going to be set point for Danny now. 5k will stop the approach here for me. Who's struggling to find their way in? No 6P that time around, though. Fast off him. Into the jump. There's the 6P. Danny engages the Fujirak. Close slash. Gonna catch the back dash. Has an opportunity to do some pressure. It's gonna be dash cancel into the BRC. Threatens the fuzzies into the low. And Meaty gonna be caught by all of it. Fujirak out of range. And Meat gonna have an opportunity. And this is their last chance in this set. They're gonna hit with the lows. Combo into the 5H. That's going to force the burst out from Danny, who wants to close it out here. Meat taking some space. Jumps Bro. right over the 6B into the throw. Jumps into oh, hey. the 5H, and that should be enough to kill. What a Save comeback there for me. You're still alive. Oh, one pixel left. Hey, this is a backdash stun dipper if I've ever seen it. Stun deep bot. <laughs> and he kills all with Meat. Gonna return with Randall their own with a 2S to finish Danny off. Yeah, apparently Danny 5P into 2S was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, challenge oh, on hit. Huge. We'd love to see that. And what a conversion a here. Maze combos have only gotten cooler with time. I swear May used to just do the same combo whether it was mid-screen or corner. And she had like one loop. And now it's like the combos have gotten so much more creative in, the, in this recent patch. Low profile is the far slash. Converts to the RC. Once again, we should see this nice little wall break into the super. No, it's actually a double back dash into the low catching the landing. And me will steal this game. And we are going to a game five. The first, the first set of top eight being a game five. This really sets the precedent for the rest of top eight. Hopefully, hopefully all the sets, uh, this electric, hopefully all, hopefully the players are just so understanding of their characters. Cause we've got a lot of heavy hitters in this top eight. And as you can see between Meat and Danny, they are they are just two of the players who are just, you know, just so understanding of their character. For example, Danny's anti as against Meat. Meat's knowledge of the conversions. It's just, oh my god. <laughs> Not the run up throw. Into the 5k, yeah. dash cancel. Look at all that uh, corner carry that Kai got there from that block string. They're going to take to the corner. It's going to be a 6h starter. This should be good damage for Kai. That RC is definitely going to weaken a bit of the damage, but, you know, keep it safe. And that is the difference between a bar between these characters. Kai's 2p, 6p into, uh, what's that move called? Allow, allow me. It's called Dealer Eclat. There we go. <laughs> Dire Eclat. Okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's a really nice Abari option for Kai. It's going to give him a knockdown. 
But uh, regardless of that, Danny once again getting started so well. And it feels like, despite me uh, being even up here on the scoreboard, it feels like Meat's always playing from behind. And we should see the fuzz here again. This time we're going to threaten a low, right? And Meat actually anticipated it. Gets the 5k counter hit. Finds a way in. But a 6 oh. speed conversion! And there's no chance for burst here. Danny will be taking this set. Wow. Okay. Next match of top eight winner side, it is going to be Dwaro Warberry versus Lurie. Lurie is uh, nothing new to this tournament. We see them compete very often. Dwaro Warberry, I believe it's their first time in this back for brawl event. Of course, representing the Nago, if you've seen him in other tournaments like Bamboo Battles, TNS. I feel like I see them quite often. But yeah, as I was saying, I've... I have thought uh, high level Faust just CPU, and because we don't have much Faust obsession in the EU scene, and honestly, the best, uh, the best Faust we have, we have, the best Faust we have, sorry, is Juxtaposer. I got, I got, I got five one by uh, CPU. So yeah, it, it goes to show that you know you can't be sleeping on Faust if you don't, if you, uh, you know, you, if you're good at the character, you're, you're, you know, you're good at the character. That's a lot of blood, potential pop. No, not on dual. No, no pop dual there. We're going to get aggressive with the command grab. It's actually going to be the same side. Going to catch the whirl. Should be able to convert this into the corner. And that will be Lurie taking the round. Now, I think uh, Lurie is actually really comfortable in this matchup. We saw that they had a close set with Sunlight at the Back for Brawl Invitational that went on last Saturday. And Sunlight is an incredible Nagoriyuki player. So we'll see if Lurie has maybe adapted from that set and uh, taken some lessons home to apply into this one. Either way, they're not going to do much this round. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was a Nago round for Lurie. It happens. You know, it's like this. It happens. Good I be there on the on the uh, Nago Fodka. Already, Lurie finding himself in the corner. It's gonna be a Fukio. The JD gonna catch. Yeah, Nago Fodka is such a dominant button. As as uh, if you didn't know, Sage, I'm actually calls this a seven frame fast slash. It's just it's just that dominant and neutral. It's a uh, what's it? Seven frames neutral. On, it, it's a neutral on block, I believe. So yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just a really good one to the be frame throwing down. <laughs> the frame down on the move is crazy. What a JD to deny the afro throw. And look at the damage they're actually gonna get as well. But just trying to fish for these JDs. Has to give up a bunch of space. 5K last second, gonna save them from eating a free turn. A lot of blood here on Dwarf's side. Can't be using many options here against Lurie. Which is, which is just where Lurie wants it. Uh, it's Wall here. Oh no. Oh, bad burst. Punished. Oh, push into the I'll bomb. See. That was a really nice item awareness there here from Doral. It's gonna come down to one situation. Once blood lowers, I assume Doral's gonna get a bit aggressive, but that bomb gonna come right back into their face, and that will be Lurie taking the first game. It's it's always it's always just really I guess mesmerizing to cast these high level Faust players because, you know, as I said before, I, I don't really see them often. And Lurie making his making their big showing against uh obviously you know the, you know one of one of the big three nagoriyuki it's 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 really <laughs> the big three huh it's, i mean it's the big three ram ram hc nago but yeah get it's game honest, two it. like leo and zato <laughs> <laughs> to be honest don't tell leffen that, Zato, that zato's high tier i would never oh great bait there from lurry using that um Follow up on the thrust there to a bait on the burst. Good wow. six peak flash from that. Yeah, six peak well. conversion to the Beyblade. YRC coming out here. It's going to be fuzzies out of the YRC. Dwarl should be able to convert this to the wall, but the Afro actually going to deny that. And Lurie's back is still to the wall. Things are looking very scary, but a very well timed J2K will give him a little bit of. Oh, I take it all back. Oh, no. I take it all oh, back. No. no, you're still okay. trapped. GG, GG. Oh, burst comes out. I'm surprised to see burst here, but blood's very high, but a last second trade. Gonna be enough for Doral to close out the round. Yeah, JD is such a difficult button to challenge when it's landing right on top of you. What a 5P to deny that. And they're actually gonna pick up the trumpet and be able to take another turn. Runs up, goes to the command grab. That is gonna be stopped. Oh, this is huge for Lurie here. Really good screen control. These awesome three hammers. Honest, Faust neutral. Oh, 
I'm surprised by how much we're seeing JD here. It seems to be very good. Yeah, yeah, this I'm assuming this is the range where you know you want to use JD because oh, Tor really no. seems to be in their element here. And as I say that, that verse gets baited by Lurie. Well, that's very high blood here. Petra yeah, pop no here for Tor. And Boral is a lot of meter. The problem is that Nago can't really do much with meter without their uh, blood being lower. That, that should be a, No, they got BRC. I'm pretty sure they could have thrown. That's 70 frame overhead. Round starts when he's big here. It's going to be Fukio under. Tries to ant here. Unfortunately, couldn't make it happen. Blocks after the Beyblade. Fukio's in. Two asking away because of the J2K. You can see Dwarves well, like micro-spacing themselves. Yeah, that's, that's what I was, was going to mention for like, this entire set. I've seen between these two players that their main goal is screen domination. Is screen domination, as you can see from Dwarves there. Dwarves Dwar has Luri where they want, where they want him. But at, 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 at this mid-range where Faust isn't really comfortable fighting. But same with, same with Luri. Luri. Luri wants to wall in a, in a high blood scenario where Luri can just sit back and throw their items. And the, only see, time, the only time that a big body is safe against Faust is when their back is to the corner. When the Faust back is to the corner. Because as long as Faust is spaced behind them, they're always free to throw items. And these items heavily disable big bodies from yeah. fighting in neutral. Okay, I need a backfire there. YRC coming out. 5k into the 2S. And there's Luri immediately backdashing and trying to make some space, get some items out. Unfortunately for Dwar, a Meteor will be there. And a close slash conversion will close out the round. Luri with a 2-0 lead. Yes, yes, really good showings from both players here. But... <laughs> I'm just looking at Dwar's uh, lose coil. Ouch, my bones. Yeah. Uh, as, I, as I was saying, they, they both have very dedicated game plans, which is obviously screen control. We saw we saw Dwarf controlling controlling Lurie's movements with a 2S, 5H, 2H, you know, the buttons you'd expect to see with Nago. But Dwarf seems to use them so... It's as, it's as if it's like enchanting, I guess you could say, to watch Dwarf use the buttons like this well. But the same, the same also goes for Lurie. It goes both ways. Lurie's space awareness, their item awareness with their character, it's it's great. Oh, oh failed cool. gold burst there. Not good burst there. awareness though, that's gonna be blocked. And this can be a great <laughs> round, a great opportunity even for Dwarl to come back into this set. Takes a fast one, but you gotta secure that second round to get in the board. J2K here from Lurie, 5k in a whiff. Not often that, that happens. Faust's little profile crouch is uh, pretty good. Nice staggers, gets conversion, safely ends it with a 6H, continues pressure, that's a PRC, into the close touch, oh. into the 6H, and I'm not sure if it was worth committing that meter if it wasn't going to kill. There you oh, go. Oh, well, it definitely was. I, I, it worked out, but I wouldn't say it was uh, the right play. Either way, Doral going to be getting the board off the Fukio DP. Fukio DP is a really, really good option, and you see a lot more Nagoriyuki's going for it when they can afford the blood. It's just an absolute lockdown mechanic. Oh. Just, just seeing that again on the stream. Fast slash slash. Third third hit hits Lori. P PRC. Close slash six H. That's like all of their life gone. It's yeah, not bad. It's it's <laughs> fair damage to be honest. Probably probably like somewhere in the top twenty one. For sure. I don't even think there are twenty one characters in this game. <laughs> Ah, aren't there? There's probably like 19. Are there 21? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's 21. There's, um... Okay. I don't right, need right, you to count him. Stop. Level. I don't need you to count him. <laughs> it's going to be a 20, but we don't, we, don't, we don't count Angie as a character. Oh, okay, dude. Switch coming out. Uh, Dwarf going for a lot of 5Ks, but they're just constantly whiffing. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're picking 5k because they want to be able to block a J2k. Because as they were using 2s earlier, they were getting J2k'd. But 5k definitely seems to not be the button here. 5d. Sackers with the 5ps. And somehow, some way, Dwarl finds their way. Uh, punish still. Oh. And that's set point for Lori now. Got one round to close it all out. 
Ground start here is going to be huge as Lurie still doesn't have burst. You don't want to get counter hit. If it's a regular hit though, I think you can hold it. The bite here was huge on Dwarf's side. He's got a lot of blood oh. though. It's definitely not infinite blood when you get a bite. Jumps out, JD was <laughs> in the corner now. It's going to be a 2D counter hit into the item throw, but more importantly into the command grab. I don't know who that was. It's Faust. And the wake up throw, it actually backfired for Lurie. Gets the burst out. That is another trumpet. Picks it up, back dashes the command grab. First coming out for Dwarf, needs to maintain this advantage. Does RC in the back, but unfortunately, it is going to be a blood burst. Does Lurie land this 5D combo to close it out? Yes, he does. That will be Lurie taking this at 3-1. First match of top eight loser side is going to be JTR versus Diego Ubis. And this is the first time that we've seen a Potemkin in top eight in quite a while. How far will they go? It's going to be an IBFD here from JTR. Knockdown here, though, from J Diego Ubis. 6k yeah, if you're into the back dash. Yeah, if you'll notice, JTR is playing birthday train, so they do have the buff there. But does it matter? Because Diego Ubis is going to Potemkin Buster anyway. Not even Birthday Train can save you from this Garuda Impact. <laughs> Big back Mega Fist to avoid the command grab. Goes for the Garuda Impact. Into the 2D, but what a uh, challenge here. Outside. Yeah, armors straight through the big button. And Diego is playing this matchup masterfully so far. Oh, I forgot Snake Eyes. There we go. Oh, yeah, guys really guys. Attempt, I'm dumb. yeah, I think those are the only two, though. JT not out of it. Very nice. Everything Nago does is very safe, okay? We don't gotta give him props. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it should be a nice corner conversion here. Shouldn't be enough to kill. Oh, I take it back. Six H. Oh, killed. You <laughs> yeah. see, this this is because Potemkin actually has one less effective health than Nago. <laughs> yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was why. Uh, <laughs> All right, Fukios will be able to block in time. Tries to challenge, gonna be caught. You can see that JTR is actually playing really patiently now when it comes to their grounded movement. You do not want to be caught by a random knockdown. Oh, oh that's dirty. Tio Gubis, you're evil. Even though it looks simple, like that's like such a mind game, you know? Oh, you're popping, you're because popping here, yeah. If you like up back against Potemkin, you will get a... Uh, Dead. We'll get deaded. No, if you up back against Potemkin, they can go for the cancel into uh, Heavenly Potemkin Buster. So it's okay. You don't want to just jump. You know, you kind of have to backdash, but then they can like delay it. it. It's rough. It's really rough. Oh, I love Potemkin. If only he wasn't bottom one. He, he, I don't even know how to fix Potemkin though. Like. I don't know if Potemkin's a character that you want to be, like, good, you know? <laughs> that kind of gets rid is, of the charm of, like, playing your honest grappler. Potemkin is still, like, um, atoning for his sins in Accent Core because 2S in Accent Core uh, vacuumed. Honestly, yeah, it, he, that's what he needs in this game, to be honest. That would well, probably if, make if him that, good. If Pot 2S vacuums, he is top one, unironically. His nah. pressure would be insane. No, no, unironically, his pressure would be goated. Like, no, I don't think it, so. Back, back, It'd be a lot better, seen, but... You have not seen ACR Potemkin. You're Do right, you know but I'm ignorant, and, and uh, I know it's best, you know? It's so true. Woo! You can't hit Potemkin with his own mix-ups. And what? <laughs> the back there's... What? Okay, dude. That was an incredible scramble there. Both players using meter to go for mix-ups. And in the end, Yegubis with the back dash BRC into the pop buster. Loads of what supposed to be in hit right now. I, I, feel, I feel like JTL's being over-respectful in this matchup. And it's it's leading to Degubis, uh, you know, hitting a lot of Potemkin Busters. But obviously, you know, that's also due to the uh, ins that really really good meter usage that Degubis is using against JTR. Obviously, the PR scene to Pop Buster is a huge one. Yeah, meter is the definitely Potemkin's most consistent way to land Pop Busters yeah. because doing it in pressure, a lot of the time it's like kind of fuzzy back dashable where you're like, your button's going to miss too because it's not very active. That's just uh, oh, it's no a pretty way. bad it. Oh, wait. Can you actually convert this? You should be able to. And what wow. again? Degubis looking dominating right now, taking a 2 0 lead against Nagoro Yuki. What I do want to see is uh, Blood Rage Punish 2 H uh, Heavenly Potemkin Buster. That would make me very happy. That would be pretty but hype. Yeah. <laughs> what I was saying, Going though, to... is uh, 
When I was playing Potemkin, I actually tried him for about like two weeks just for fun. Yeah. And something I realized is that a lot of his stuff is like backdashable, like pretty easily, like his normals even, because they're not very active. And so Potemkin really has to go out of the... Yeah, I'll just, I'll just stop. Oh! oh my god! No! No! Diego, you wouldn't no, do it. Not you can't, you can't. Okay. No, not PRC Papa's. No! Diagubis! That's set point! Diagubis! Jersey, you, 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 you gotta block these, man. You gotta block these. The mental. What's left? There's nothing left. The. Oh! Mini Garuda into Garuda, that's a true frame trap. The third Garuda though gonna whiff. Should be able to RC convert this, try to wait. And that wake up super is definitely gonna be enough to get out of the corner. Not gonna be enough to kill though. Bob this Diagubis can actually wake up Pop Buster and that beats every single option in the game. Yeah, of course. Oh. It's a five oh, framer, it's faster oh, no. than your close slash. No. no. Imagine they got these fuzzies. No. What? Oh my god. In this combo! What? Yo! I just watched the Potemkin free on Goryuki in the top eight. God tier song. First match of top six. It's going to be Dwarf Warberry versus Diegubis. We just saw a very impressive performance Diegubis had against the previous Nago. Can they make it happen again? It's going to be a cross up into the Pop Buster at such a decent range as well. Very difficult to block. It's going to be. I like that Diegubis is really swapping between normals when it comes to their pressure. I think it makes Pop Busters more ambiguous. Great backdash on the Groot Impact. 5 h coming out, has the RC, gonna catch a landing. No, it's gonna be an air to air. Bar slash, in wow. Canceling that into the slide head. Should be able to convert this as well. Yep, converts directly into the wall. Very optimal punish. You gotta be doing that when you have meter as Potemkin. And what another convincing round here from Diego Bis. Big on that pipeline. These IBs doesn't matter though. You're gonna get command grabbed anyway. I'm pretty sure Ooh. Diego just went for the IB into Pop Buster like we saw last game, but I don't think they inputted Pop Buster fast enough. Uh, pretty rough scenario for Diego for, for a Diego Bis here. No burst or me to speak of while on to all sides. There's positive bonus and hard knockdown. Oh, not again. Well, it's looking really high though. One mistake could actually lead to a lot here. Not this time though. <laughs> Never with Naga. Never. Round start backdash. Diga was playing very patiently. Oh, gonna catch with the slide head and gets the hit in the Garuda. And the Garuda buffs oh. actually lead to hard knockdowns here. The strike throw gonna be successful here for Diego Bis. I think Diego Bis is actually threatening a lot more Potemkin Busters than I'm used to seeing from Potemkins. Usually you have to condition players to respect the strikes more often. Oh, gonna mess up the 6-6 oh, RC or the Kara. And that's gonna actually deny them from winning this first game. Hopefully. That mistake doesn't cost them though. They have super here. Just go for a wall. We're gonna see a wall. It's gonna. Good oh mega my fish. god, oh they my won. God. I've actually never seen that counterplay before, but wow, okay. So 5H into Beyblade can be just a straight up frame trap, but. Megafist puts your hurt box up so quickly, it avoided the frame trap, got behind it, and then he whiff punished with PRC Pop Buster. Just incredible plays. Like, I'm not even shocked anymore at the plays Diego Biss is making. I guess this is what it takes, though, to win with Potemkin. You have to know all these niche little RPSs. Yeah. I love watching Diego Biss play. And just Potemkin in general, man. I actually, con I actually considered mining a uh, part, but, like, you know. I like, I like moving. True. Oh, Ooh, gonna get backdash. And you can see right now, Dora Warberry is going for backdash in like every situation. And uh, it's definitely a major weakness of Potemkin. <laughs> Not that situation though. Uh, they were expecting probably like a meaty 2D. Yeah, they went for the Mega Fist there. They were expecting a... Look. How are they doing it? And baited the burst as well! I feel like we need a compilation of the plays that Diagubis has made so far. I feel like Dora Warberry should actually be responding by command grabbing Potemkin back. And that's exactly oh, what they're going to do. As you say that. Oh, very bad, very bad position here, Diagubis. 
Not gonna oh, be enough to kill, but it's gonna be really rough. Oh, that one HP sailing to Agubis right now. Oh, it doesn't matter the two S. I think that's, I think that's actually gonna chip Agubis out, right? Agubis was blocking. Possibly. That is unfortunate. I, 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 don't, I didn't catch it, but it's gonna be a good I round trip here for Dwarl. Oh, gonna be baited. Very nice engagement with Tupi. Wow. And oh, I. Nago using Fukio P button is just incredibly safe. Notice how Tall's burst goes actually not increased since it got baited in the first yeah. round. <laughs> That's actually true. It's gonna be a very difficult round. I don't know how many pop busters this is. Four? <laughs> it's, it's Nago, so like, probably like seven. True. Oh, huge. All right, right here, pop buster. You gotta do it. No. Whoa. What? Wait, look at the damage. What? Wait, just PRC pop right, buster. I'll take no, it's gonna no, be a wall! No. It gets the- Oh, the trust one! Wow! It's not an invincible super! So Dora Warberry actually gonna be- get a- get out of jail free card from that challenge! And that's not just because of- and that's not just because they're playing Naga. Man, I did- I did- I did tongue twisters to prepare for this casting, and I'm still tripping my tongue. Happens. Lo love to see it, love to see it. <laughs> close slash, close slash, close slash, GG, shake my hand. Kind of true, though. Lily! Lily. Lily. That is not changed to be. This Once song goes so hard. Again, getting the knockdown from the side head. And I think Dwarf's biggest downfall so far in the matchup is being caught by these side heads. Slide into oh, 6k, gonna be K. caught. Unfortunately, 6k. <laughs> Unfortunately, you did 6k. Therefore, you lose. Lots of backdashes, close slash 2S, definitely a backdash full string. I want to see more like close slash 2D here. I feel like that might help stop these backdashes from coming out. I didn't even hit Sour, I'm mad. That oh, should spell the end of the two. round. Goral Warberry gonna have so much meter to work with, and Yaguba is actually gonna commit to using the burst, gets the hit. Should be a nice little confirm here into the Groot Impact. That's going to be a bunch of corner carry. Into the Strike Throw goes for the 5D. Once again, going to be backdash. And that right there is just an example of uh, if you're going to change your offense, make sure that you're beating what your opponent is threatening. And right now, Dora Warberry is mashing backdash after every single close slash. Wow, great. Good burst from uh, Dora Warberry. Very, very risky burst because it was obviously off the close slash, but, you know, it worked That's again. No, no way. PRC oh, conversion. Oh! Oh my god, that was insane. Should be able to take a turn here. Has the RC out of range, but... Oh. Should be able to OTG, is it enough? It's not. And wow. The Garuda actually going to work out there. I have to imagine the Dwarl right there was going for Wake Up Super and miss it. Oh no, a very early command grab here from Dwarl. Pot trapped in the corner. Yeah, I, Not for long, yeah, Rose. Just the extra damage. We're all gonna get some positive bonus going. Command Grab's gonna whiff, and this might cost them. This might cost big. Oh, Diego Bis plays for the wake up super. Not coming out this time. Has the RC to extend. Goes for a back dash into the far slash. Not gonna see a wall break here. Gets the hit. Doesn't commit to the meter. Messes oh, off the back dash. That's, that's unfortunate. so unfortunate. Wait, oh, go burst. Oh, uh, wait. No way. There's no way. Dude. No way, man. The Temkin Super fails again. And Jeez, once just... again, Dwarl gets that get out of jail free card. And they're actually going to get a, a, a lead in the set now from that. Make it in, Vaughn, bro. I swear. I, oh, I'll, I'll do anything. It might be pretty messed up if it was in, Vaughn, to be fair. Well, it, um, how many? He was think on mid tier think, in season one. Think of how long it stays out and like what it does for Potemkin. I don't know. Imagine if Potemkin could do wake up wall and then convert off of it and do like 50% HP from just for having meter on wake up. That'd be kind of. I can do that anyway. Whack, you know? Kind of true. A lot of blood being used by a dwarf, by dwarf here. It burst comes out in the third hit. You're not, get, um, you're, you're not getting that blood back. Never mind. Digo was heavily relying on slide head to get him through neutral. And it doesn't look like Goro's biting anymore. Oh my god. 
Has the RC to extend. Well, I thought I saw a backdash start up there. Come on, come on, take over this. Come on. Yeah. Oh, the five P gonna put uh, Dwarl on set point there. Yeah, Diego Bus was definitely going for a pop buster there. They were just trying to desperately find a way back in. And oh no, an early command grab could spell the end of our Potemkin friend. Diagubis, hang in there, my friend. Please, you've only got one, you've only got one less effective HP than Naga. You can hold out. Wake up gold burst, maybe. Gonna be back there the gold burst! Oh, they messed up the hammer fall. Okay, just oh, go for God. it. They get the hit. No Dwarl has meter this time around, though. Go for the wake up close slash. That might have been super. Who knows? Five kick and wish. gonna happen, right? RC to extend. I know it's gonna end with super. I just know it's gonna end with super. Oh my God, no. Oh, why? Stop. Stop. Stop, you're lying. No <laughs> way! The Dwarl Warbase? <laughs> Dwarl Warbase is out mind gaming themselves. They're like, no, they don't go for Paul Buster again here. I'll just let them end their turn. Diego was like, no. Five P tick throws. Honestly, command grabs are doing better for oh, oh my god for Dwarf right now, but they just got a little too greedy, and now Diego has an opportunity. Yeah, oh, that's unfortunate. Dwarf Warbear going out of their way to play around the double side heads now. You don't want to get command grabbed, and yep, Diego is going to be caught by the close slash and a five K frame trap. Oh my Mega god. fist in. This is an opportunity. This isn't the, Gets an octa. You're not here in time either. Pop oh, Buster. No way. Let's go. Do not Let's get go wake up super in here. They. You, you are seed. You are seed. You are seed. That's it. That's it. That's that's on the set two two. That's two two right. That's two two. <laughs> Game five scenario. Dear Goobus, you are correct. You are my. Oh, oh my god. Diego is single-handedly making one to play Potemkin. That was crazy. <laughs> that was one mistake the Dwarl made. They went for command grab, recognized that Diego Boost was being very respectful. They tried to overextend and go for another command grab. And Diego Boost wasn't having it. They get one hit and convert that all the way back. Oh my god. It's gonna oh be a chance. My god. Into the into the bait. They get the hard knockdown. And the pro. Not the mash on wake up. That's so unfortunate. Gets in with the slide head though. 2S into the 5H get with. That is a counter here for Dwarl, who drops the combo. Wait for the back dash, no punish. 6K into nothing. Wanted to see if Dwarl would commit to that RC, which they're gonna do now. Mega Fist right over. Pressure's Ooh, extended, gets a knockdown. Pop us, they're gonna be back dashed. 5H whips. I'm, he's, he's waiting for Mega Fist. Yeah. Oh. What a JD. Yeah. It was. I think it was pretty. Uh. Pretty obvious what Diego Boost was looking for there. So Dwarl with the preemptive JD gonna get that hit, and now they're they're on game point, set point even, and uh, this could spell the end for a Potemkin friend. <laughs> I know I said that last time, you know, and he won anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> This I isn't actually, real. I love 5D as a media option for Potemkin because it actually catches backdash better than their close slash. They're not going to use RC to extend here. 5D gets oh the counter God. and converts. I this is a double Luigi. Luigi. It's a double Luigi backpack. Do you understand the stakes here? Do you goo this? Don't get an honest grab. low tier versus Dwarf. Blood's looking pretty high here. They're, they can only really threaten those big normals now, but. Yagubis has a bit of an app. No! Oh, oh, what an unfortunate burst. That's so unfortunate. Yagubis in such a good position. Wake up, bro. They wait. It's it's looking bad, but it's not over. It's okay. You know what? It might wait, be over. Wait, wait, hang on. It's over. No, it's, it's, yeah, over. it's over. Uh, it's over. What a set, uh, though, dude. What a set. What a set. What a set. Final match of top six loser side is going to be Meat versus Pineapple Hour in the May Mirror. And it doesn't get crazier than this matchup. There's a throw. Going to get back. Punish the jump of a throw. Huge.
<laughs> Both players are swinging their anchors. Waiting for someone to work out. That was an interesting way to put yourself on the other side. Big to us as the RC to convert. Should be able to take this to the corner and close it out. Six inch will be enough. Trust me, chat. There's a reason that me and Backpack are both silent. There's, we have no idea how to commentate May versus May. Well, I was writing out the, the May colors in the, the thing. Oh. That was your cue to commentate. <laughs> Oh, Should oh, be an extension oh, oh, here oh. as the RC. Dolphin there. Dolphin there. That was actually a really bad conversion, I think. I'm pretty Good sure there's a lot more. Good dolphin there. 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 Dolphin RC into the dolphin. Goes to that J2K. <laughs> Huge mix Into up. the beach ball. <laughs> it's so difficult challenging May in the corner. Honestly, like up back JH for May is like a mini back mega fist. <laughs> I do honestly think that in May's transition from XR to Strive, they they I don't want to say they dumbed down Dolphin, but it's definitely like the like like Bro Dolphin's like the, the highest IQ move in the game. game. I mean to be honest, yeah. Yeah, we have a problem? Did you convert that, actually? What? Oh, what wait, did no. you say, Tatsugeki? It's a whale. You can't combo there. Solomon in chat. One of you say Tatsugeki when meat does dolphin, and, you, and the other says Tatsugeki when pineapple does dolphin. Oh, what? Uh, meat's yellow, and pineapple was green. I'll, all right, I'll, all right, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do yellow Tatsugeki. I'm good. I'm good. We shouldn't do that. That would be the most annoying thing to watch. It would be funny, though. It would be funny. It would get the clicks and the lols. I don't think it would, actually, is the thing. Well, you just, to, you just need to say Tatsugeki in a funny voice. I watch this. Tatsugeki! See, that was funny. Latif? Oh my god. Wally, you're curried! You're curried! You're curried! Oh, I love Latif. Did I tell you I fought Latif and I lost uh, 0 to 18? That's pretty good progress for you. Yeah. Because obviously last time I was, I, was, I was only losing. Backpack was losing to me um, 0 to like, what? 25? Uh... So. So, you know, with, with this knowledge, I'm going to be, you know, teaching him the things that I learned that were against Latif, you know. I can't believe you just lie like that on my stream. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I mean, I mean, I mean zero to 30. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure you're going a little there. I'm going to be honest with you, chat. Cryo has never once taken a game off me, and this is kind of embarrassing that he's trying to pull this off. I don't think Backpack even knows who I play, to be honest. Backpack like looks at the XR character and he's like, oh, wait, you made Johnny, right? Yeah, Speaking I of too. Johnny, I, I believe both Mays here are actually fighting for the rights to Johnny right here. Is that lore? I, I, I mean, no. Because obviously, the, you know, there, is, there isn't two Mays in the lore. But... Oh, oh the 6H doesn't connect on the wall splat. But yeah, um... I'm sure... I mean, back, back, I know you've not played Exod, but like you know that like May like loves Johnny, right? No, I don't know oh, well, anymore. Uh, I don't know well, any Johnny ever whatsoever. Well, Johnny is this dude. He's like he's he, he's like he's like male sex appeal of the character. You know, like like, like black unbuttoned like shirt, black cat. Yes, yes, exactly like God Lewis. And um, he he leads the Jellyfish Pirates, and May is in there, and May just loves Johnny. Like One Piece. It's like, exactly, it's exactly like One Piece, except like Luffy, except May is Luffy. For real? Yeah, yeah. May is actually Luffy. Did you, did you know? I didn't know this. Burst coming out. Oh, Balls so for the beach ball jumps in. That's gonna be a very real. nice anti air. Me trying to close out this game, take a two-zero lead, but Pineapple Warrior says, "Nope, Totsugeki, you're trapped in the corner." Build DRC here. What a 6P though for me. Should be able to convert oh. this and a Sanjuru as well. Blocks the See? YRC and no way you kill here. They don't. He sold the bar. Six, double 6H six might kill. No shot. And did oh, well. Oh my god. Okay. Holy mackerel. 
<laughs> that, that was quite the comeback. And Meat gonna go 2-0 on the set. Needs one more to close out the main mirror. Ironically, Luffy eats a lot of meat, so like you know where I'm coming from here? Oh. Matt, May, Luffy, same person. Uh, Matt, I Pat, see get that. on this, really. They both wear hats. You didn't like that one? I didn't even hear what you said. <laughs> they both wear hats. Dual one. What does that even mean? Uh, but that's, just, that's just an observation. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, uh, they both have anchors. They both have two legs. Oh, both Luffy and May have hats. I get you. That's true. And Luffy and May, they are both people. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that one. Well, I don't know. That's, uh, that's debatable, I think. Very nice punish, but no conversion right afterwards. Double Dolphin gets the hit. Lots of raw dolphins here coming on uh, Pineapple Hour's side. Definitely a, a big style difference between these two players. And Meat playing for the win and actually going to be rewarded for that play. Should be able to kill it. here. No, actually Wait, dropped kill. It. Yeah, didn't think they were going to kill, so they actually went for a throw stagger. And oh, and it's going to be their downfall. Unfortunate. Yeah, Pineapple Hour actually going to close that one out. Pretty surprising. Yeah, I, I thought Meat might have had enough damage there. Apparently, they didn't think so, though. Meaty chases the far slash. 5k into the dash cancel. Meat really likes going for these dash cancels. Something that I've noticed while playing them and also while watching them. They do that quite a bit to stay in. You know, it's these combos from me. You can call you can call her Walter White while she's cooking up stuff the way she's cooking stuff up in the lab. That was good, that was good, wasn't it? That's a whiff. Oh, I think Meat takes it. Oh the 5p! It's be set point after meat against Pineapple Hour. Yep, round shot's gonna be big here. Gonna be 2s into a fast dolphin. Chases oh, with the close no. slash, and this is about as bad of a start that you can get against May. Look so at that damage. I waste that much bad combo, guys. <laughs> gonna double whiff into the dolphin. Runs up, goes for the command yeah, grab. Dead. Should dead here, right? be able to kill you here. Fast and elbow. what game are we playing? That was a two touch. That was a two touch game. Winners finals, it's gonna be Lurie on the Faust versus Danny on the Kai. Loser stays in the bracket, but winner obviously gonna get a free ride into grand finals. Gonna be a little bit of a weird start, but we're back to playing some nooch, if you can call it that with these two characters. One throwing out full screen disjoints, the other throwing out items. Gonna be a nice little two ants here there from Lurie. First coming out from Danny, gonna grab the trumpet. Gets in there, extends some pressure. A lot of J2Ks from Lurie here. Pot potentially is a way to, uh, you know. Oh, God, get the meteor, but unfortunately can be caught by their their own ton. Into the burst phase, uh, really late burst as well. Great stuff there by Danny with that uh, burst back punish. PRC. And they actually wow. went for the strike option, which will hit Danny and give it opportunity. Yes. Oh! Danny goes for the DP, gonna be caught by the command grab, wakes up DP oh, into the RC, and that should be enough. Danny will be taking the first round. Six P into the meteor. Oh, meat is out. Into a hammer. And this was actually Lurie's time to throw out some more items, and they actually instead decided to chase. And I don't know if this is actually the best situation for them. Very nice jump there from Danny, though. Should go for that meaty Fujiri arc. Chases, close slash and a close slash. Will catch the back dash, and that will be some great damage. Kai well, doesn't often get that kind of damage. Just to but, show they can ooh. do it. Now a lot of items must have come out from uh, Lurie here, I'm seeing. Maybe it's Big not good in this match. Counter hit. Back oh, dash. Unfortunate. And Danny will be taking that first up there. Yeah, it's going to be 1-0 up to Danny on the card with Lurie on the Faust. Trailing right now, but, could, but has the potential to bring it back. They are a very strong Faust player. Hmm. What, what are your thoughts on Stun Dipper? Pretty good normal. Ah, right? or ah, pretty good Scum, di sc scum Dipper, the five frame low that Kai definitely needs. Uh, kind of true, though. Honestly, yeah, it should be even on block, like, like Beyblade was. What well, do you yeah, think but about Blade, that? Blade, Blade, 
Beyblade wasn't a low, so. What if, what if, uh, imagine this, imagine this, okay? Oh my god, here we go. Imagine this. Okay, what? What, what if, what if Stun Dipper was like minus three on block in electric state? Oh my gosh. Right, what if Beyblade is a low, but it's minus 18 <laughs> on block? Done! That's free! Stun what Dipper? You... Stun Dipper is a mid, but it's zero on block. <laughs> I actually don't want that. No. <laughs> Even if Thunderbird would still be good if it was a mid. Jumps in, lands on a banana peel. Oh, that misses on. Oh, oh once he's again, gonna be baited, but no conversion. 2K2D gonna be backdashed. Fast RC cancels into the mix, mix, mix. Blurry with another meteor. Great block on the cross up. 2K gonna catch a backdash. Converts to the 6K. Oh, guess what? Another meteor, but Dainey consistently jumping over it. Baits the. Gets away from the bomb, but it's gonna be a PRC. Both players using Meteor. Oh and the close pass catch the back dash. A big jump over the 5D. Chases with the Fujirak. Is this enough for Danny to kill off of? It's not! How are you dead? Both players looking for that final hit. Lurie and finds the hit. win. And Gets hit. hit with the 2H. Chases with the 5H. And wow, what a round, dude. That's already drawn out towards the end. Oh, and be a 2 Low grip off the grass slash. That was cool. It's amazing. Nice little oh, stagger there in the throw. throw. Unfortunately, we'll be out of the range for Dire Clot, but the ton will be there in time. First, the wake up DP. Trying to get Lurie to challenge. They don't, but they will be caught jumping. Keeps it tight. Mix, mix, mix. Should be plus here due, due to the trumpet. And it will. Catch the jump. That was actually a straight up strike throw option. He needs it. Kai needs this. Don't worry, guys. Kind of true. Oh, oh the big throw. staggers. This is a really big round. There's a massive difference between 1-1 one, one and 2-0. Oh. We're getting some good items. Really good RNG this time around. But that trumpet came at a really bad time. What a beat! Stop. Oh, my God. I think right now the big difference between these two players is defensively. Dany is doing so much better than Lurie. It feels like Lurie is just being red. I think I'm losing some money tonight. <laughs> Dany with a 2-0 lead. Dany's, Dany's just playing out of his out of their mind right now. Dany is nasty with it. Dany is actually a, an incredibly good guy. It's 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 good it's good to you know get some get some intel on the NA scene so I know who who's a beat at the majors. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I hate to say it, brother. We gotta we gotta get like an NA EMEA crew battle because I don't think EMEA stands a chance. Dual one. I'm I calling agree. it right here, right now. Well, you agree? I you agree. Have to your side. Dude, right. The, the only saving grace we have is the teeth. And I guess no, that she wants it. Bro, you have Mystic Smash, you have Leffen. Oh yeah, Leffen to be honest, and Mystic. But Mystic plays Axel, so... Mystic makes Axel look good though, is the thing. Yeah, that's... yeah. What, what's oh, the DP? Was, yeah, that was a bit of a weird DP. And Danny definitely gonna pay for it that time around. Oh, Zando, yeah, of course. Zando's good, but like... I think those I, are probably all of like the tier 1 players. And I think like there's a big. So far. I think the thing about the MEA scene is that there are like a, the tier two players. It's like a, such a big group. You know what I mean? Like you have a lot of players like almost top tier. Wow. Oh. PLC about to make it safe, but it's still not safe for, for uh, Kai's fast slash. Oh Very no! Nice throw. The throw. Many fast. Where you going? Big five D. Oh what? man, uh, Big J has, has the conversion and Danny needs one to close this out. Oh, we're Come talking about right Slash, dude. Lurie, please, I don't want to lose money. In, close out again. Left. 5 p.m. here. No burst bait this time around though. Lurie, still alive in the set. Gonna be able to pick up the trumpet and challenges because you don't want to be thrown through that trumpet there for sure.
Nice little mix, mix, mix loop into the item throw. And all these items are actually going to do a bit of damage here. And the pressure is still going to be extended. Catches with the lows. And I think Lurie's taking this round. But a bad item at the worst time. And Danny still has a chance. Goes to the 5D. Converts it. Has bar here. 5D again. No, it's going to be a throw. Has the RC. And wow. Danny somehow manages to steal it. Loser semifinals. It is going to be Meet on May versus Dora Warberry. Still repping that Nagoriyuki. This is not a matchup that I think I've seen like too often. I I don't really know who to tell you is uh, going to be favored at any portion in the game, but we'll be learning together as it goes. Pineapple Hour in chat saying it's Nago favor. Does May have a round start to challenge DP? I, I think uh, that's something I want to know first off. Looks like we're going to see a very patient round start from both players. Dwarl going to take the corner advantage. Goes to the 5P tick throw. Pressure looking great. RC to extend. Goes to the 2K into the 6K. But me going to go for an ID. Back throw. And now Dwarl's trapped in the corner. It's going to be a walkout into the punish. And that was really, really great defense there from Dwarl. Those are the 2S. Jumps in. A nice little conversion into the knockdown. What? I think that was a fuzzy overhead into, into throw. Which is wild. What a challenge. Goes to the RC. Meat really wants to win this round, especially since they have the meter in the back. You get the hit in the lows. It... Empty low, or empty into the command grab. Goes for the beach ball, does it again! What? I thought it was really ambitious for me to go for that. And somehow, they bring that back after an early command grab and uh, losing all their HP so early into the game. And it looks like it's gonna happen again to them as they two command grabs and the blood is so low. Might get chipped out here, it's gonna be a six speed, gonna whiff. Jumps in. Should be a big hit here. Yeah, that OTG 6 8 is just going to do so much damage. Great round start here for me. 6 game to the Dolphin. Another one. Converts into the knockdown. Command grab again. Meet, I think needs to start fuzzy jumping. Or fuzzy backdashing to deal with these options. There it's going to be a backdash into the 2K 2D. Goes for the cross up. Dwar Warby not going to be hit, but will be chopped in the corner. Just as I say, that's going to be an overhead. This time around, we're going to challenge the throw, which is going to work. And lockdown meet in the corner. Ball looking pretty high. Nice little lockdown there. Don't get thrown. RC, 2K. The challenge. Low profile is the 6P. Gets a nice conversion here. Both players have burst, but they're really low HP. You don't want to get burst baited here, and not going to kill. High Guts really paying off here for Nagoriyuki. Blood looking really high. You can still afford like a Fukio here. Barely. Runs up, goes to the 6K. Doesn't want to be caught, goes to the burst. And the far slash is going to be enough. Me will be taking that first game. And Dwarl just having a lot of close sets today. It, it feels really bad. <laughs> I was back, so I am back. Hello. Love to see it. Uh, did you catch any of that first game or no? Uh, I, I, I did. I was bus busy in cake while I watched the first game. You are evil. What do you mean evil? My voice is so dead. You made me solo cast so you could eat cake? Well, I mean, no, it wasn't just, it wasn't just sweet cake. Oh, uh, you got this one near on, I'm muting. All right, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm on me. Here we go to game two here. Meet on the May and toward on the Nagoyuki. Right. Good early pressure from me. Jumping with JH there. So that's J. That's, that's, that's JS. Fully charged 6H. The conditioning is real. Uh, on the wall there. First results. Turn damage there. And again with the JS. All counts at 6P. That's huge for Nagger. Boy, it comes in. That's even, even, even up the uh, life lead. Oh, the RC into low. That's huge. Oh, PRC unfortunately cannot confirm there. And that is going to be for me. 
Gonna be a big DP here for Doral Warberry. Low slash, gonna be back dashed. Nice little knockdown. I feel so much better after you taking a round break. My, my voice feels a little back. Gonna be a big 6H into the Dolphin. 6H again, gonna be caught with a 6B, 2S. Chases with the far slash, DP. 2S into the 5H, and that will be Doral taking the round right back. Big important round here. Round start gonna mean a lot. It's gonna mean ID back into the ID forward, 6P. Me using a lot of JS right now, and it looks to be doing really well at beating uh, 6P. Hitting low enough that 6P is getting counter hit, actually. Not a kind of button that a lot of characters have, but when you have it, it's really exploitable in this game. They cross up once again. Another option we season quite often. Doral has no burst, no defensive options really at all. And so you're gonna have to hold this, but one really good read gets him out of the corner. Gonna be a knockdown into the RC. Chases with that JD. Jumps in, JS gets the counter hit, and Meat can close it out here. Backs off, gonna be caught by the, J by the uh, 2H. From really far away, Beach Ball, gonna be caught by the 5H. Needs to get that final hit. It's either player's game, they go for the command grab. You go for the, yeah. And they, whoo! It is going to be <laughs> Meath stealing that final round with some kind of magic, some kind of sorcery with the uh, fast cancel from super into the cross up low. Prior, are you still there? Oh no, it might just be me. So sad. My voice. Duel one. <clears throat> Gonna be a round start counter hit. Into the sweep. Abandoned, I know, so sad. First coming out, DP whiffing. Gonna get a knockdown. Flow slash, held 6H. Gonna be plus enough to go for an H Dolphin. And that big counter hit probably spells the end for Dwaro. It won't, but five Ps into the super definitely will. That will give a lot of burst meter though back to Dwarl, who's probably gonna get it this round now. Very nice challenge, doesn't want to be hit by the command grab. One command grab is all Nago needs to reverse the momentum of a game. Gonna be a 6 speed. Chases, goes to the throw, gonna be a challenge. Knockdown to SO2G. Stays in, blood still relatively low, so you have a lot of options to threaten. Particularly Beyblade into a command grab. Pretty good. No OTG from it though. You actually have to think, had Dwarl gone for throw, they could have just OTG'd killed from that situation. Also, throw does a little more damage than Nago command grab. 5k round start gets the hit. Command grab. 5k catches the dolphin. Gets the hit. Going for some burst baits. BRC's back. Throw's gonna whiff. Waits for the burst, but gonna be caught by the super delayed gold burst. Look at Super. Has another RC as well. That was a good chunk of damage. It did cost both bars though. Gold Burst. Coming out. Will be punished, but unfortunately. Didn't convert that 2S into a fast dolphin, which allowed to do a knockdown. Instead, they go for like 2S and a jump. Gonna be caught with the 6P. And Dwarl's gonna get in the board. <clears throat> Meek in a back off gets really aggressive out of nowhere though gets that knockdown I wonder why we're not seeing run up command grabs from these counter hit dolphins I'm fairly sure they're guaranteed now cross up again get out of the corner uh, apparently it's a really awkward angle for Nagori to challenge you probably have to anti it with like close slash maybe reverse 6p Me giving up a lot of space, but we saw this last time from him as well. That's going to be a trade, but that's going to work out for Dwaro, who's able to convert it. Goes for the command grab. Going to be caught with the JH. It's going to be uh, a knockdown that's converted to RC. Converted to the wall. And what a side switch combo here for me to close out the round. Needs one more to close out the set, though.
Goes through the 5B into the jump this time around. Tried to debate out of the button, most likely. Speaking of buttons, that's a pretty good one. 2H counter hit. Can only do a ton of damage. And they should be able to kill. No, actually not enough. May barely surviving. That uh, 2S, though, going to chop your feet off. Big far slash, probably your burst. No. Meat still trapped in the corner. Has an opportunity, does it again. Whoa, really not doing well to anti airing these approaches. We'll get the burst off, though. JD, catch me out of the air. Double, oh, double Fukio into the command grab. But a super to retaliate. Low blood here for Dwaro. I don't like that commitment of meter. I feel like they could have used that a lot better. Noggle Blood still very low. It's going to be a 5k into the dash cancel. And your life from the line strike throw. It was throw. That is me taking the set 3 to 1 over Dwarf Warberry. Losers finals. It's going to be Meat on the May versus Lurie on the Faust. Both of these players have actually won this tournament before. And both players are going to have a chance to play against Danny, who did really well last week. I don't recall if they won or not. I think they got first or second. Jumps in, gets the hit. Nice little conversion and an even better burst bit. Super absolutely gonna be enough to kill here. As Meat takes it very quick first round. No. No, no! <laughs> Meat drops the combo, just goes for another health 5D saying, I'll just try again. Jumps in, the 6B anti is gonna be very nice there. 5H. Gonna be caught with the scalpel, converted into the bomb, and Lurie, while well, waiting this extra damage, even has the extension with the RC after the bomb. Runs up, tries to go for a throw, gonna be caught with those two Ps. J2K, gonna whip, goes for it again, love coming out. Gonna be a trade, close slash. Very good, catch the back dash, even from range. PRC into the throw. There's an opportunity here. It's going to be 5k. But unfortunately, going to be caught by the active frames on Mini Faust. 6H going to beat the Dolphin out right. Two items coming out. We're even. Unfortunately, two of them are Afro. Dolphin catch the back dash. And what an aerial chase there for me, who's able to continuously lock down Lurie. Steals the corner, though. And. Lurie walked out of the corner to make sure that Meat landed in the corner, then challenged. And if not for the follow-up for Meat, I think Lurie would have taken that round. It's looking very intense. Item Super coming out. We do see an Afro, and Afro being on this side of the map is actually all right. We will probably see a love throw here, but Meat anticipated that Lurie would jump up to try to throw out the Afro and did a preemptive JD, which caught the super jump. Duel one. Let's rock. Five inch. In a double item. Gets the mini fast. Has the meter to extend here. Throws an item, unfortunately. Is not going to be hammer there, which probably would have helped a little bit. Converts into mix, mix, mix. Should be enough to kill. No, actually didn't get that wall break. And JD will actually be the one closing out the round here. Round start J2K going to be anti by the 5K. May 5K. Looking so good in this patch. What a button. Jumps up with the Jades, gets the hit. Unfortunately, this bomb is going to deny any kind of pressure. Really smart the way that they played that, though. And once again, Lurie going to be burst baited. And I feel like uh, Lurie has probably been burst baited the most of any player here today. Danny with multiple burst baits, and I'll meet with him as well. Big scalpel hit, though. That's really great damage. Trips over the banana peel. Does get the meter, though, to save the day. The man grab. You got fuzzies for your life. Actually, uh, Lurie says, no, I'll just strike through, actually. 
And Lori gonna get in the board. We're all tied up one to one. Gonna beat the 5k double item throw gets in there, gonna be interrupted though by the 5 ps Love gonna create a lot of space though, gets the meteor to be able to extend because of it. No, actually, meteor is coming out a little too fast. Oh. Uses 2s to react to the up dolphin, gets the counter hit. Nice extension as well, should be able to take this to the wall. What a play there from Lurie. Five H can whiff. This is gonna give me an opportunity to go for the strike throw, and they run it. Get the hit. Do it again. Me getting a lot of value out of these empty throws, consistently doing it. And I wonder why are these? Maybe those are regular throws, not command grabs. I suppose. I I'm wondering why they weren't converting those. They might have been regular throws. Why is he coming out? Goes for the run of command grab. Where is an opportunity here to steamroll to the end? Does it again. Are you going to guess? Are you going to hold it? Meet. Going to be a cross up this time around. JH, you're trapped in the corner. Burst coming out. You no, you still have the offer on you. Next to wins. Dolphin gets the back dash. Not enough. Just throw out a beach ball. There it is. Goes to the PRC cross up. And J2K going to win in the scramble. And that is Lurie going up 2 1 in the set. Now, going into this matchup, I really thought that May would have a really significant advantage, but it seems like Faust's normals are actually pretty difficult for May to contest. Particularly Faust's anti-airs, to be frank. Faust's 6 speed, kind of crazy. Faust's 5k, kind of crazy. Duel 1. Gonna be a 6H round start. Nice little conversion. Able to extend this to the wall, and this should be actually... Oh, unfortunately, it dropped. That would have been a 50% wall break. But <laughs> that is called... Uh, what, what do we actually call those? It's called something drop. An American drop? I don't know. When you drop a combo and just get more damage for it. An American reset? Maybe? I don't know. It's gonna be a burst bit. As uh, someone in the chat said it. American reset. There you go. And Lori, one round from closing out the set. Just needs a good start. And that's exactly what they're going to get. Twitch counter hit and a double item throw. Unfortunately, it's going to be Meat that picks up the trumpet. That's going to deny Lori a lot of options here. He's now trapped in the corner with the JH in his face. Nice little knockdown. Gets the hammer, meaning that you can go for the throw safely, which is what they're going to do. Meat goes for the back dash. Going to be caught by it afterwards. Big 2H. Those lo full screen lows really de uh, like messing with May's ability to challenge and I'm pretty sure Lurie just took it there. Yeah. Lurie takes us at 3-1. Grand finals of the Back Brawl 18 NA bracket. It's going to be Lurie on the Faust versus Danny on the Kai. This is a run back from what we saw on winner's side and Danny did win that. I believe it was 3-0. But you really can't count Lurie out. Lurie Consistently competing really well in these brackets and has won before. Big six H. Gonna allow, allow that to confirm. Danny playing largely in the air right now. Larry says, nope, swats him out of the air with a 6B. Gets an item out. Should be able to get a knockdown. No, actually ticked out of it. Jumps right over it and has to use the burst to not get punished. Danny goes for it again. Gonna be a backdash. Chases with the Fuji arc. No challenge until afterwards. Banana peel on the ground. Who's that gonna deny? Ooh, right behind it. Lurie runs forward. Able to throw the afro out. Got a challenge. He's Fuji arc. Gonna be a backdash into the DP punish. And Lurie takes the first round. 
Hoodrock and a DP is like a, a soul option. I'm very surprised to see Danny throw out something like that. Gonna be a Fudrak and Tier. Should be big damage. Gonna be a drop. Fudrak and a whiff. Goes for the jump. And it really looked like Lurie was gonna be able to throw punish there, but it was barely not enough time for that. H Fireball coming out. It's gonna be low profile. The hammer not gonna do much for you. Has the RC to extend. Danny gonna take a round right back. Chases with the six speed into the mix, mix, mix. And somehow Danny actually able to challenge there. Where's coming out? Gets the mini Faust. But even more importantly, they get to hit right afterwards, allowing them to throw a lot of items here. Waiting for that meteor or a trumpet to give them an opportunity to, to extend. That's what they're going to get. Not the greatest of turns, though. Sun Dipper comes out. No RC follow up. Goes to the PRC, gets the counter hit. First coming out from Danny. Gets caught with the item. Oh, gonna be caught once again. Goes to the wake up DP. Lurie now trapped in the air, or in the corner. Backs up, goes to the dire clot. Big counter hit. That should be it, wow. Kai is not a character that does much damage until you get hit with a counter hit normal in the corner and then they can do quite a bit. Danny will be taking the first game. That was a very close first game, though. I still think it could probably go either way, despite the uh, one-sided nature of the winner's finals match. We can definitely see that Lurie is more cautious of when they are picking defensive options, like... Uh, Fuzzy jumping and bursting as they're not being caught by uh, as many of these options. Dual one. Let's Once again, Danny starting in the air as they usually do. Probably trying to just see how their opponents react to that kind of zoning. As well as getting an early electric state in your opponent. Danny goes for the burst. That was a bit risky. That might have burst baited. Has the Afro on them. Definitely wants to deny Lurie from taking a free turn. Should be a JD here. So Danny wants to deny that with a wake up DP. Mini Faust takes him out and the Afro still there. And the JD gonna win. 2K gonna end here. JD's gone. But so is that Afro. Six edge. Closes out the round. You can see Danny was desperately trying to disallow the Afro from getting put on fire. And Lurie took advantage of that by just threatening other options. Oh my god, I thought for sure that was going to wall break. Goes to the PRC, into the command grab. Lurie has an opportunity to loop. JD going to whip. Danny goes to the throw. Surely they don't do it again. Gold burst coming out. It's a knockdown. Wake up DP. Has the RC. Hit out of it. This is fine. You let yourself get pushed back and you pick up the... Oh, Trumpet disappeared. Goes for the command grab. Going to be hit. Goes for the DP. Has the RC to extend. Goes for the 5D, which catches the back dash. And Danny going to steal the round to Andlery's burst. Really big round coming up. Goes for the food jar. Going to be caught. Lurie throws to the hammer. Not going to do much of that spacing. J2K going to whip. Big jumps here from Danny, who's now going to chase with a throw. A back throw, even. Built up a lot of space here. Big staggers trying to get Lurie to challenge. Danny really wants that counter hit, because that's really where they get their best award. Going to be a knockdown. Goes for the close slash. Aggressive burst coming out. Has the RC to extend. It's going to be a food rock that trades. Double item throw. Bomb. Afro banana. JS into some pressure here. Far slash going to get a hit. Danny stole some meter. Are they going to be able to do it, though? Doesn't look like it as Lurie closes out that game. We're all tied up one to one. I'm really excited. I'm really happy that. Uh, that this match is so close.
it really feels like at any point either of these players can come back even from like really bad situations very tense dual one let's rock six speaking of whiff six be knocking with that time it's gonna be food drawer into the run of close slash glory goes to the burst very slightly mistimed that gold burst, which definitely would have been helpful. Danny gonna jump in. Hits that JS. Gets it again even. You don't want to break the wall here. Alright, take it all back. Oh my god. What what a setup! Gonna get the extra damage. Caught in the air. Big air throw here from Lurry. Who's still not out of it. Danny gonna be able to grab that, goes for the throw. Luria avoids the trumpet, but it is going to be a 6B that closes out the round. Backdash to the far slash. And he's slowly taking space, once again threatening these aerial projectiles. And you see there what they're really all about, and that's denying item at full screen. Very nice challenge here from Luria. Danny knocking the cop by the scalpel. Jumps over the afro. Cop with the bomb. Chase with the stun dipper. Fortunately, wasn't uh, actually getting punished for that. And honestly, I think stun dipper is probably fairly safe to use in this matchup. Because worst case scenario, when you get punished, you're not really holding that much reward here for Faust. Got to be caught by the lows. At this point, you just don't commit anything. Yeah, you just accept the loss that round and you take it a final round. Both players holding on to burst. Meter is cleared. Round start's gonna be big. It's gonna be a 2P for Luria round start. No conversions for anybody here so far. Luria trapped at the corner. Big jump in for Daney, who runs up, goes to the throw. Probably gonna go for it again. Finds the DP. Gold burst gonna be baited. No punish though, so it was a, a safer gold burst than we're used to seeing. Wake up DP back to back. Has the RC to extend. Doesn't have to go for it. Chases in the air. J2K. Gonna be a little too slim though. Avoids it altogether. 2K with the anti-air. And stun dipper. After the J2K should be enough to close it out. And it looks like it will. Danny gonna get an advantage in this set. Up 2-1. And I ran out of water. Unfortunate. <laughs> Here we are on game four. It still looks like it could be anybody's game. But Danny with a significant advantage. Not only in this set being up 2-1. But they're also coming from winner's side. Which means Gloria has to win two first to three sets. Big far slash counter hit. Gloria gonna go for the burst. But Danny copied the afro. That's a ton of space that Lurie just made. And that afro is not doing much on the other side of the screen. Gets the hit. Converts to the wall. Goes to the dash cancel. Bujarak into the DP. Has the RC to extend. 5D into the close slash. Into the dire or clot. It's a one-touch game. And somehow 6B traded there. And Danny going to be on set point. Tournament point even. <laughs> JS going to whiff. Jumps in, goes for it again, gets the hit. Lots of close slash staggers. Trying to dare Lurie to challenge, and that's exactly what's going to happen. It's a 6H counter into big damage. Doesn't even end with the super there. I have to imagine we're seeing a 5 five frame low any second now. Going to be a Fujiara. Jumps in, top of the 2K. There's the low. Has the RC to extend, probably into the super. YRC is baited. Into the throw. Has the RC to extend. This could be it. Who drags in? Lori's not done yet, though. We get a gold burst. 6 h whip, and that just did legit 40%. These items are ruthless, but the items will bite back. That will be Dainey closing out the set and winning the Backbabrawl 18.
NA bracket. 